Sup, sup, sup. My name is Rui for the Eager Council, and this is take three of Mastering the Blue Eyes, part three. Should be the last take for the first part. Now, this video is just for citing against, well, eight certain decks, and the first one being Dragon Rulers. You guys ask for the side help with it. You ask for the, you know, for it, for Mastering the Blue Eyes. And I said eventually we'll get there, but you know what? I said enough with eventually. Let's just do it. So... I'm going to give you a quick rundown real quick what's going to be coming out Blue Eyes wise. We have the Zombie Blue Eyes for October 31st. Happy Halloween. That's pretty much why. Um, we have the dual videos coming out in between and we'll have Mastering the Blue Eyes Part 4 in sometime November which I don't know where we're going with that. That's up to you guys. We could do a Part 2 on sighting depending on your decks in your local area. It could be a subscriber based one. It's up to you. I have a few ideas. I have to go look at my papers and decide you know what's actually going to be it. I have to go to the meeting room. But that aside, let's get into the first matchup. Is Dragon Rulers. How do we side against them? These are our options. We have Kaiku, Maxi, Didi Crow, Droll and Lockbird, Vanity's Emptiness, Imperial Iron Ball, Mistake, and Mental Drain, which is Mind Drain. Let's see which ones hurt us. The ones that hurt us is Mistake, because neither player can add cards by except by drawing them. That's the only one that really hurts us. Everything else is a viable option. I'm not calling Mistake bad. It's an option to slow them down, though. Honestly, I, I love Mind Drain with Imperial and Vanity's Emptiness just for lulls and trolls. Maxi gives us faster draw power and allows us to counteract their special summoning. Droll and Lockbird allows, allows us to lock them out from their cards. So, per example, if they plan Maxi while we're specialing, sure, give them the first draw. Who cares? After the first draw, they ain't getting nothing else. They get nothing else. Unless my conjunction between cards is incorrect, which doesn't really matter. We can use it for when they search. DD Crow, the reason I bring up DD Crow is because when you're specialing one from the graveyard, you can banish it out, you ain't getting it. GG. If they're using the plant version, you can banish the spore out. Maxi goes without saying. Kaiku also gives us protection because they can't banish nothing from either player's graveyard and allows us to inflict the 1800 damage. Now do know they're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna be ready for all of this. Mind Drain is probably the one that I can be ready for the most because it's not commonly seen as, as much. It's always Iron Wall or Vanity's Emptiness, but it's up to you what you prefer to side. And you can see throughout the video there's certain cards that keep popping up, so that gives you a key clue what should be in your side deck. So let's move on to the next one, which is Evil Swarm, which is probably the worst matchup for us. Okay, against Evil Swarms, here's what we have option-wise for siding. We have Grand Mole. Penguin Soldier, Snowman Eater, Raikou. Now, Raikou depends on your deck. So, pretty much I'm pointing out to Chaos or Mill. Fossil Dyna, Concentrated Light, Prideful Roar, Honest if you're not main decking it, and Shadow and Purging Mirror. <coughs> Let me do make mention that if you are running Shining Angel, the Light Exceed that basically negates the effect, nullifies it, is a great out along with Cow Ga -ga -ga Cowboy and Mouthstroke. There's also Dire Wolf. If you have it, if not, wave two tins. Don't worry about it. It's going to be like a dollar. So let's talk about the Evil Swarm matchup and why it's such a pain in the butt. And there is one other card that we can side against them, which I didn't mention because I forgot to put in. It's right here, Decree. Okay, so they play a lot of back row and Ophion. They always protect the Ophion. So our two main strategies is we can either Decree and jump over it, or we can Shadow and Prison Mirror and jump over it, or we can decree, set the fossil diner, and hope to God they don't have the dress and play the dress beforehand. Now, fossil diner, right cope, snowman, ear, penguin, soldier work through battle phase. Grand mold, they're going to see it a mile away. They may affect railer it, so you're warned. Concentrated light, shadow, prison, and mirror, these are negator effects. These are going to allow us to say, you cannot attack, you cannot get through, and you cannot special any, so... There goes your Ophion. I could care less. They can't attack with it, so your little ball of lights protect it. Prideful Roar and Honest both work the same way. They attack. You're jumping over it. There's a bunch of cards like this. Um, you just got to look for them. I forgot the actual names. And then Decree for the back row because it's back row heavy. Dire Wolf to pop your Ophion. Gaga Cowboy to run it over. Mousestroke to flip it down. <coughs> and there's also the Starlight. It's, it's um... So it's a rank 4 light that's 2,000 attack. I can't even like pull up the name because I can't even spell it right. But anyway, the point, the thing to remember is if you're running Shining Angel, 
then you have an instant out. And a lot of you are going to scratch your head and go, what the hell are you talking about? If you have Shining Angel, they attack into it, you're getting another Shining Angel. Then you can summon, stay with me here, then you can summon a Bright Star or an Honest and Overlay into a Rank 4 Exceed that will give you an out to Ophion. See how that works? Or you can play it with Decree in the side game. That's that's why Shining Angel is such a crucial part. It gives us outs to these matches that we normally would have terrible matchups with if we focus on Big Red and all these other things that, don't get me wrong, they're fun as hell, but a lot of times it comes down to making your deck ready for every matchup so you can win that game one. That game one is crucial. Game two and three are a pain. So I wanted to make sure I covered everything with the Evil Sworn matchup. Grand Mole is going to balance it, but I don't really suggest it. Your best bet is going Penguin Soldier or anything else here that will tickles your fancy. It depends how you tackle it and how many Evil Swarm decks you're dealing with. If you're not dealing with any, you're not really going to use any of these side cards. You're going to go with what else is on the list. But let's move on to the Spellbook matchup. We have an extremely good matchup on. It's just their speed. We need to lower it sometimes. And that's perfectly fine, but we have high speed too. So the best thing you can do is sit behind Azurai's, shoot out big dragons, and just beat face with them. That's a lot of our game plan too. But... When that all goes down the drain and fails, here's some options for you. Droll and Lockbird, because, well, they get the first search. We could care less. They're not going to get anything afterwards. Epidemic Virus, if you really want to go techie with it, siding the Red Eyes with it, or main deck of Red Eyes, depends on your variant, depends on your build, depends on what you're using. And Mistake, <coughs> which is going to be a secret rare of Shadow Spectres, but it's still a great card to actually use. Because they won't get anything added, and that shuts down a good chunk of their deck. We're not really affected by much of this matchup, but still, it's something I had to go over because some people are having a little bit of trouble with it. I wanted to make sure that we covered it. So it's pretty much do what you did last format, and it's a little bit easier to pull off in the matchup. Ajurai spams, so there you go. We're going to move on to a tougher matchup, which is going to be Mermel. Okay, the Mermel matchup. They spam a lot, so we have to be ready for that spam. These are the best options to use in that spam case. Draw and Lockbird, they can't add a lot, so they can't spam a lot. It's not really a fully viable option, but it's there. Mistake, same kind of thing. I prefer the Draw and Lockbird just because of the timing. I don't have to set it. Then it's Emptiness. They can't Special Summon. We could sit on... We could sit on stuff all freaking day long, and when our stuff goes to the graveyard, we could care less. We could turn it on and off, on and off. Forbidden Chalice, Forbidden Lance allows us to put it on and off. Maxi, when they special, we get more speed, as if we really needed it. <laughs> and DD Crow, just for banishing out their stuff, because, well, they hate being banished out. The Felgrand and Azura's... The reason I say Azra, it's not really a side card. It's more of you should be running three in pure. You should be running at least two and everything else. Sometimes one, but I don't. I highly doubt one. And the reason is is because a lot of their stuff targets, and they can't target when this guy is on the board. And another option, which I'm trying to get to here, is Felgrant. This is going to be ultra rare in Shadow Specters. There's proof on a poster. I will post it on the Facebook page. After I'm done filming this, so it'll be up there on Friday, and I will constantly post it so people know that Felgrand is ultra. So probably not looking at a super high price tag on that, but pretty much if you watch the tag duels over the weekend from me and Yugi Farm 4 there, you can see how good this card actually is. It protects your blue eyes, it protects your stuff, it protects all your monsters. And having that protection with a 3,000 beat stick is something that Mermels will have a hard time getting over. Normally their option is to go Big Eye Jacket and use it against you. With Felgrand they lose that option and Felgrand already has more points and Blue Eyes has more points. So when you put Felgrand with Azra together, you're getting, if you do Azra spam for three turns, <laughs> there's a reason I'm laughing. And then you go Felgrand, you have four or five turns of protection. That's just ridiculous. That gives you plenty of time. And this is just out of the game one situation. That still gives you plenty of time to draw into a side deck card if you're in game two or game three. That gives you plenty of time to work on that. That gives you time to get into your trade-ins and all that. Some of you are probably going, well, there's no way you can do it that, that well. 99% of the time you can because the deck's built to do that. Sometimes you're going to run into those headaches. I won't lie. Sometimes you will. But we have Maiden. If they target Maiden, we're going to get Blue Eyes. If... 
we get blue eyes and they send it to the gray air, we silver's cry call the haunted it. That's why the flexibility of the deck is so well with most of these matchups. The only two really bad matchups I would say is probably Fire Fist and like Evil Swarm. Fire Fist is just the back row and once you get into siding, it's GG game over, done deal. You know, we can we can deal with the targeting and we're triple lance, it's just ridiculous. And that's another um, side deck card that I'm not mentioning if you don't main it. If you have the option to get it. I know I have budget players. I know I have competitive players. <coughs> competitive players. I know I have players that have money coming out of their wallet like hotcakes. That's perfectly fine. But this goes for everyone. If you can get it. Doesn't mean I'm telling you to get it right off the bat. If you can get it, make sure to put in the lance. If you can't get the lance, then put in the catastrophe. That's um, the, uh, the trap card that's like a heavy storm. Run another MST. Just run that back row hate so that way you have no nothing stopping your Azurize except effect billers which you can mind drain. And that's pretty much my tips for Mermels. And now we're going to move on to the mirror match which I know a lot of you are probably excited about because well, never really talked about it. Okay, here comes part 5 which is the mirror match. So how do we set against the mirror match? Because I know a lot of us, you know a lot of people don't use this for regionals and stuff. That's fine. It's all Dragon Rulers. And Dragon Rulers are hard enough to beat already. But let's say the future, this deck takes off even further. Because I know a lot of you love it. <laughs> then what would we do? Max C, you t it's a great option. You chain it certain times when this guy is going off. You're going to get the guarantee you want. DD Crow, same kind of thing. You're going to guarantee to get the what? Draw and Lockbird. We play trading cards, a consequence, poly duality, um, Ancient Leaf. Ancient Leaf is playing tag and... Bunch of other draw power. So, draw and lockbird hurts us. Skill drain hurts us, but if we're doing a mirror match, you don't want to be using skill drain. Um, the reason I say you don't want to be using skill drain and necro valley is because those are going to hurt your deck too. You don't want to hurt your deck to to have this like mirror match. Effect Railer, it does sting, but it doesn't kill us. So, works against our eyes. Prifo Roar. This is another one that, hey, you were talking to me, or me, my honest. Vanny's Emptiness, Imperial Iron Wall, and K like if you're doing a mirror match and they have side hate against dragons, they're going to use it against you and Imperial Iron Wall just goes, no. So how do you do, the, if you're using Imperial Iron Wall, how do you get over the whole blue eye situation? You're probably asking me. Mistake, there's Vanny's Emptiness, there's Prideful Roar, these all work in conjunction great together. Now, not everyone's going to have the same blue eyes deck. I respect that. So options like Decree and all that other stuff is going to be great options for you to have in your side deck in conjunction with everything else. But it comes down to your local area. So if I was to show you my side deck tomorrow, it may not work for everyone. It works for me because of my area. If I was going to a 10,000 person YCS, I'd bring probably the most versatile side deck you've ever seen in your life. And the reason I say it that way is because you don't know what you're going to run into and you have to be prepared for pretty much everything that you can, flex you can go into and fle have that flexibility. You can predict for 15 games, you're going to play against Dragon Rulers, but that's not always the case. So, got to have that flexibility. So, when it comes to signing against our own deck, you can use Felgrand, Azurize. These are all great, but you got to have those negators. You got to have the, you got to slow it down. If you slow the deck down, it can't combo. If you can't combo, you can't make it. Remember, Vanny's Emptiness is weakened because of the fact that we can turn it on and off through trading cards consequence. Now let's move on to Fire Fist so we can get through this video. Not that I'm rushing or anything. I just know that you guys have been waiting for this. So I'm trying to get it out there faster. Okay, Fire Fist. What do we do against Fire Fist? Prideful Roar if they try attacking to us because it's lulls. If you want to go that route. Mistake because it shuts the entire deck off. We can deal with not being able to add cards, you know, search cards. Except by drawing them. That's fine by us. They search a lot, so this shuts them down. Royal Decree, because they play a huge back row, and if we want to shut Mistake off, we can shut Mistake off. Because it was a mistake. Um, Azra Spam, I say this a lot, Azra Spam, is basically you have two Azra's on board and two Blue Eyes in the graveyard, go Heretic King, and just steal the game away. If you take away most of their field, they can't recover. If they can't recover, the deck cannot continue onward. It's like Noble Knights. It makes it an easier situation if you understand that. And I'm going to go in detail over that in the next few weeks about the recovery system, how it's like invisibly there where you like, can my deck play out of like just having two cards in top deck mode? This deck can because we have we have Silver's Cry. 
Not every deck can, but we're one of those decks. Felgram, because Felgram protection, it's like, you can't touch me, bear. You can't even see me. We can actually negate the bear, too. So these are things to keep in mind when going against a Fire Fist player. It's not really a super hard matchup. It's just the back row. The back row gets you. And to get over that back row, our best friend, Royal Decree. And this pretty much means no Call of the Haunted. So that's fine. We could side do two Decrees and over the Call of the Haunted to make those switches. And you're going to see this in the IRL duels. IRL duels meaning in real life. That means I'm dueling in person with the camera that I use for coffee time. That means I'm doing at locals and doing post-commentary like I am now. Well, kind of like post-commentary. So what that's going to show you is, is, yeah, is I'm saying is a lot, sorry. It's going to show you that this is the way you side, this is what you want to take out, it just gives you a general feel. Not, now, er, yeah, not everyone's play style is going to equal mine, but this is the best options I could give you from a month's worth of research and a lot of experience playing a lot of great players. So we're going to move on to Bujin because they are one of those decks I feel like will get better over time. So let's just jump on to Bujin and then Black Wings. And that's going to be it for the video. So let's jump on to Bujin. Alright, the Bujin matchup. The greatest thing you have to worry about is Yamato. Um, or Yamato. However you want to pronounce that, I could care less. It's just about the matchup. And you can see there, because I put the little name there in a nice little color. We're talking about Bujin. Sorry about the paper in the back, I'm just making sure I got everything covered for this one, and then Black Wings. So, DD Crow is in here to handle their graveyard. So, if you're using something like Royal Decree, and it's their graveyard giving you the pain in the butt time with their back row, DD Crow, Royal Decree. <coughs> if it's not either one of those, and the Forbidden Lance is doing its job, then Mind Drain and Imperial Iron Wall together. If it's none of these, and it's the searching mistake, mistake for days, you can play Droll and Lockbird, but they don't search nearly as much. So, <coughs> you're losing out on a Droll and Lockbird, and you're minusing one yourself for no apparent reason. That's not something you really want to do. Too much minuses equals bad recovery system. So, if we look at the extra deck, what can we use out of the extra deck? We have Ajarize for protection, like usual. We have Felgram for more protection. We have Direwolf to get over the Yamato. Now, if they don't really have a Bujin to summon, they're pretty much going to lose the game. <coughs> so if you go turn one, you set Mistake, you play Mistake, and they don't have it, they're GG. If they do have it, they have to sit on it. They have to protect it. And it's extremely easy for us to jump over it. And that's not me being cocky. That's me being truly honest. It's extremely easy for us to jump over it. We have access to Thunder End, Heretic King, Sun. We have all these great cards that can jump over it. But if this matchup is giving you any problems later down the line or now, I want to make sure to cover it. Decree for the back, Mistake for the search, Imperial for the banishing to activate their effects, Mind Drain for Crane, DD Crow if you want to go that route. Ajarize for protection from their BS effects. Felgram for more protection. Direwolf just to nuke the hell out of stuff. So, we're going to jump on Black Wings. So, it's going to be that little edit cut. So, that way everything is flawless. I'm going over it. Finally, to end this video, and I thank you guys for taking the time to watch it. I know it's not nearly as long as, say, part one or two. That's fine. It's not about how long it is. It's about the information inside the video, and that should be what it's about. I'm not honestly. I'm not fully sure how long it is because I'm filming it in parts and chunks, just so I can edit it together and make it look all fancy and stuff, and take two days to do it. So let's talk about Black Wings. The reason they seem so good is Kalut and Massive Search Power. Take that away from them, they're really nothing. Not sound that way. Sorry, Yugi Phone Four. I don't mean to hurt you. So, one of my favorite combos to side against them is Concentrated Light and Royal Decree. Because they can't activate the Akaris attack to jump over the light. And the light just poops on them. And if they try to affect Veiling, it's not going to do jack poop. So, it kind of sucks. Another great option is the Ajarize and Felgran. If Akaris attack is giving you an issue, you can protect yourself from it. Nightbeam is another option to get rid of the back row. 
I don't know why Imperial is here, so I'm just going to remove it. And I think it's left over from the last part. Mistake and Mind Drain. Mistake, so they can't search out off Black Whirlwind. That slows them down con considerably. So they lose out on three dualities and the three Black Whirlwinds that make their deck search. They won't lose out on a lore if they run it. They'll lose out on everything else. Mind Drain, they only lose out on Kalut. So, Concentrated Light just says, no. You have to summon. You have to overlay to jump over me. And then you can do your thing. Which, again, is why we play like Forbidden Chalice. Because they'll go Dire Wolf or something silly. If they don't, well, then you just got to play the matchup accordingly. Ajarize and Felgran protection against anything. I mean, come on. This is your best option right here. You get into game two, concentrated light, decree. It's going to give you outs. Remember, though, that the extra deck is much more flexible now than it ever was. And they can just succeed out and GG over it. So you don't want to be sitting on it for years. You want to make your plays. You want to keep going with the game. You want to take their monsters off the board one by one. So you want to get blue eyes out. So you want to make those plays extremely early. I lost my I lost my play. Sorry. I stopped myself. You want to make those plays extremely early and just play out. Be smart about it. It's not really a hard matchup for us. We have the protection built in against the Karas attack. The Kalutes aren't really an issue when you have like Mind Drain up with Dodger Eyes. And we can play Lance, MST, and Night Beam for back row. If it gets too risky, just play Decree and be a boss. So anyway, that's it for Mastering the Blue Eyes Part 3. I hope this video finds you well. If it did, make sure, this is the one time I'll say it, only ever on this channel. Make sure to leave a like on the video, a like on our Facebook page, and a comment below. And telling us what you want to see next. And what you feel will be more helpful. Any deck requests that in, in, involve Blue Eyes or anything in general, just leave it in the comments and I will get to it. I promise you that much. I'm ready for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. I hope this video finds you well. If it did, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content. Not just Blue Eyes, but everything Yu-Gi-Oh! And I will see you next video, which is tomorrow. And it will be coffee time. And I'm glad to be back to coffee time. So I'll see you then. Peace.